In today's video, we have all the latest NHL trade talk, including the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are apparently very active on the trade market, trying to figure out some deals. We also have trade talks on the New York Rangers and the Minnesota Wild. There's word that the Colorado Avalanche have extended their head coach. We have a suspension, some injuries, and more. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Let's kick things off with the news that's hottest off the press. The news just broke here a few moments ago before I started to record. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche have announced that head coach Jared Bednar has been extended for an additional two years. I know he's one of the coaches going into the final year of his deal. We kind of wondered what was going to happen. The Avalanche are a team that's been very good, very solid for some time. But sometimes you see teams when they can't quite get over the hump. Sometimes they make a coaching change. It's not completely unusual. Look at the Vegas Golden Knights going from Glant to DeBoer. Prime example of that. Uh, I know the Avalanche are a team that's certainly expected to do big things this year. But have had a slow start, which is... Not surprising considering the amount of issues they've had when it comes to injuries and a little bit of COVID stuff too. Um, but this is certainly a major vote of confidence for Jared Bednar to continue leading the Avalanche into the fight here, into the playoffs. So we'll see where this goes, but certainly some great news for the Avalanche to have more stability behind a bench there for some time. I know when he first came on as head coach, uh, the first year was really really bad uh that's kind of when they bottomed out but obviously there was a lot that transpired that year he was hired late after patrick waugh had left and a lot of things were going on big changes in the organization but he's really done quite a solid job there during his time as bench boss in colorado now we also had uh news of a suspension today uh, sharks forward kevin lebank has been suspended for one game for a slew footing incident against st louis blues forward Tyler Bozak. Now, obviously, we've seen uh, way more slew foots than usual. Like, usually in the run of a year, you see it happen, you know, occasionally. It's certainly a dirty play. Oftentimes, it does justify a penalty for sure. Sometimes a suspension, depending on how dangerous it was. Um, it's a little bit surprising that none of the ones involving P.K. Subban have justified this as well. Uh, P.K. certainly has had a lot of situations that many fans have been calling for more discipline and not, but LeBanc gets the one game suspension. Now, a few injury updates. Uh, the Oilers uh, took a big blow here. Going to be without top defenseman Darnell Nurse. He's going to be out for at least the rest of November. Possibly this could drag on into December as well, but for sure we're looking at at least two weeks for the top Oilers defenseman, which is going to create an opportunity for one of the top prospects and defensemen, Philip Broberg, to be called up. He's been having a real solid year at the American Hockey League in Bakersfield, so good chance for him to come up and show what he's capable of doing, uh, and we'll see how the Oilers make out. That's uh, you know They're a deep team uh, this year, and their blue line's been especially uh, strong uh, compared to what we've seen in recent years. Um, so I think they'll, they'll they'll manage. They'll be okay, but uh, certainly going to be a big blow. Uh, Ducks young forward Max Comtois, who to me has kind of fallen a bit out of favor with the coaching staff there in Anaheim, uh, is needing hand surgery. Apparently needs to have some sort of a small bone uh, removed or something. It's a kind of a complicated hand surgery, and he's going to be out of action for about six weeks. Now, a couple of Canada's teams are not having solid years and are under a lot of scrutiny, facing a lot of adversity, and their coaches and uh, management teams are certainly under a lot of pressure to get things turned around, but none more than Vancouver. I think it's fair to say that the Canucks have uh, you know, more stress on them, even more so than Montreal. And you could argue that the Canucks, as much as they're struggling, that the Habs are struggling even more. But it seems like more of the focus and attention through the media, at least, and even with the fan base, I, I think there's an argument to make that Jim Benning and Travis Green are under more than uh, than the Habs. But not by much. It's close. They're both under a lot because both fan bases expect high expectations, especially after the offseason that Vancouver had. A lot of the moves that they made were looked upon as being favorable there's certainly some that were questionable i know i wasn't completely sold on the tucker pullman signing uh, as far as the uh, big deal that maybe the coyotes bringing in oel and connor garland i really like connor garland i mean he's an excellent uh forward who's a real motor out there uh, i think any team would love to have garland oel i don't think it's fair to say he's been terrible or anything like that so i'm not really pitting this on him but some of the moves were kind of looked upon as being questionable some were good um 
But they're certainly not living up to expectations. And to be honest, I think the expectations might have been set a little too high. But apparently recently, uh, as in the most recent game, there's been some fire banning chants breaking out at the game. And Jim Benning was asked about this and was apparently told and um, commented that uh, it was quite upsetting. And he doesn't really, you know, uh, it's unfortunate to hear that happening and all that. But you know what? When the team is not living up to expectations, and you've had a lot of games, Vancouver, where it looks like you're not even barely trying, the effort has been terrible, and a few times when the effort's been better, the execution and discipline have been off. So, uh, like that last game, uh, it was really a mess uh, where we saw some really dumb penalties, and um, that's got them in trouble. So, you know, they have to understand here that they're under the microscope and the fan base is getting restless, so we'll have to see where things go. But certainly, uh, the pressure is there. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Benning try to pull off a trade. But as I mentioned the other day, Travis Green looks like a, I don't know, man. Like he looks like he's in tough there. And just looking at his composure and just his body language on the bench, there's times where I think he's kind of like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like you know what I mean? Like he just. I think it's getting close to him kind of losing the players if it hasn't happened already. And I wouldn't be shocked if we get a coaching and possibly a GM change in the next little while. It's hard to say what what, what will happen. Benning wouldn't give Green a vote of confidence either. That didn't sound good. So we'll see. But he, of course, was just signed to a two-year extension too. And we know owners, especially in today's day and age with all the lost revenue, aren't really fond of paying people to not work for them. So we'll see where that goes. In Montreal, Dominic Ducharme called out his team to the media. Of course, their last game was against the Penguins. Uh, and another embarrassing blowout loss. Uh, Dominic Ducharme and his the post-game media uh, scrum just said, basically, we were just bad, was one of his exact comments. Um, calling out the players, basically saying that they really, everybody, needs to be better. Um, th- this team is really very much heading for a draft lottery position. Uh, I hope they don't um, you know, trade their first round pick because if things don't get better, it's going to be a high first rounder. And they're hosting the draft as well uh, in the uh, next summer. So you'd have to think that they're likely going to want to make a big splash of the draft. If they have a high pick, maybe make a trade or something. So I wouldn't think that they'll be doing anything too crazy. I suspect they're likely going to maybe sell off a few veterans as the season goes along. Like we mentioned yesterday, maybe Ben Sherratt. But Dominic Ducharme, to me, is a, you know, he's almost considered a lame duck coach in a sense that I don't think he's going to be back. I mean, I'd be shocked at this point. I know they, they took the interim tag off after the Stanley Cup finals run. But things are not going well, and I wouldn't be shocked either, like Vancouver, that Mark Bergevin's in the final year of his deal. Many feel that there's a really high chance at this point where he has not signed an extension that he won't be back. Uh, and if Ducharme uh, and the Hams have this season continues to be so disappointing, you'd have to think that they're going to probably bring in a new GM and then maybe go in a different direction with the coach. That would be my guess, but these are both situations that could take several weeks or months to play out and we'll see what happens but i suspect both teams by the end of the year or certainly before next year to have a lot of changes take place to get things back on track now on to the trade rumors for today Uh, i want to start off here with the new york rangers Uh, of course we have word from insider trading and darren dreger reporting on the fact that the rangers are indeed actively looking for a Mid six replacement to replace the injured Sammy Blay, of course, who went down in that incident with PK Subban uh, in the corner against New Jersey uh, not too long ago. Uh, he is done for the season. Uh, we had talked about the possibility of a Vladimir Tarasenko trade. They've been linked to this player. And at this point, the Rangers could make it work as well, not only from a cap perspective, but even though you don't necessarily think of Tarasenko as a middle six player. But really, for the most part in St. Louis, he's been playing a lot of third-line duty. Like, he can kind of fall into that category. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to hand. Like, they could go down that road, but it doesn't have to be Tarasenko. It's going to boil down to price. St. Louis is having a decent year. They're going to be somewhat reluctant to move him unless things go sideways on them. So we'll have to see where that goes and see. But as I mentioned before, I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, Doug Armstrong make a trade, even if it's a subtraction. He's done this before. If you remember not long ago back, uh, I think it was three to four years ago, he traded one of their top centers and Paul Stastny, who was a pending UFA, who they did not intend to re-sign. He traded him at the deadline or shortly before to the uh, Winnipeg Jets. So uh, they still ended up making the playoffs and going in. They didn't do a lot of damage, but it kind of boils down to how 
confident they are in their team in the playoffs. So we'll see. But the Rangers are definitely looking. If it's not Tarasenko, they are looking for somebody uh, in that similar type of role that they had, Sammy Blade. And of course, according to Michael Russo of The Athletic, who covers the Wild, he's indicating that they are actively shopping Jordan Greenway. Uh, they may not be in a big rush. They're not going to give him away. Of course, he's a huge guy. Uh, lots of size. Uh, had a pretty decent year last year, putting up 32 points in a shortened season, which was looking pretty good. But he's in the final year of his deal. He'll be a pending RFA. And so far this year, he's yet to score. Only has a few assists. And is definitely struggling, struggling on the offensive side of the game. So it's a situation where they might not really feel like the, uh, that they really want to re-sign him or qualify him as a restricted free agent. Uh, of course, with this inconsistency from last year to this year, you know, it's like they're they're ready to move on. Uh, they might be looking for a combination of either another forward in return or possibly even a defenseman. So there's different teams out there that could certainly make that type of trade. I mean, Greenway's a guy who's, you know, was a, a few years ago when the NHL didn't go to the Olympics, he was representing Team USA. He came out of the uh, U.S. Uh, national team program and college hockey scene with a lot of potential. And he could still realize that. Like, last year was a good year, 32 points. Like, you know, they were probably expecting him to be a 40, 50-point player this year. And right now, he's on track for nowhere near that. Uh, so if he's going to be that inconsistent, and understandably, it uh, makes sense that they would you know, consider moving on from him. So certainly there's teams out there, possibly a team like Seattle, even Montreal, who could use some size. Seattle's still not really settled on a full roster. They're not having a ton of success, so that kind of makes sense. Like I said, Montreal's got uh, a lot, you know, negatively going on. They, they're going to be looking for some changes, and they have a lot of good forwards, but they don't have a lot of size, which he can bring. So that's an option. Even a team like Arizona, who's still going through, uh, a lot of changes, or even a team like Ottawa, who's not completely settled on their full forward complement either. So any of those teams would make sense, but we'll see where this goes. They're, like I said, they're not going to rush. It might be a deal that happens even after the season starts before he gets his next contract, but Russo expects the Wild, instead of signing him, will either trade him during the year or in the offseason. Now, lastly, we want to take a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. As I mentioned here, they're very actively in the trade rumor uh, mill right now because apparently Kyle Dubas is having tons of conversations, mostly around Travis Dermott and Justin Hall. Now, I know yesterday we talked about Wayne Simmons possibly being expendable. And, of course, if you like I said, you look at the addition of Kyle Clifford, you look at the reduced uh, playing time, the fact that Simmons has been out you know, a little bit lately, um, you know, but he does have control with the no trade. But I want to caution you on something. Just because he might be able to block a trade, it doesn't stop the Maple Leafs from possibly moving on. Now, I'm not thinking that they're at the point of doing this just yet. But, of course, we'll see where it goes. The Leafs are doing extremely well. So they can be patient here right now, make the right trade. But they could put uh, Simmons on waivers. That's a possibility. And he could end up getting claimed that way or even demoted. They could get full cap relief if they put him in the American Hockey League if he cleared waivers because he's making under a million dollars. So um, I'm not saying that they're uh, you know, at the stage where they're seriously considering doing that. But just with the reduced role in the addition of Kyle Clifford, some wondered if that might become a reality later on. So we'll have to see where that goes. But I don't think we're anywhere, at least you know, in the near future, have seen that. But Dermot and Hall are the main trade chips that they're looking to, to move, uh, likely because of the... You know, the stronger play of some young defensemen like Sandine and Lilligren. Um, so they're looking at a variety of other forwards. I mean, right now, they have a lot going on that's uh, happy with their top six, even their top nine for the most part. But with guys like, uh, you know, like Simmons, for example, who's not, you know, I guess being relied upon quite as much, adding another depth forward for one of those players might be something that they're interested in. I know some teams that they reportedly have been linked to are possibly looking at a team like Arizona, uh, maybe a forward like Lawson Kroos could be the return package. Of course, they, they'd love to have some younger defensemen, so they'd probably be more interested in Dermot than Hall. Uh, Chicago, for example, with Dylan Strom, that could be a possibility. And even the aforementioned Jordan Greenway uh, in Minnesota. I mean, he's a big, strong forward, and you know, even though he's not producing a lot offensively, he could certainly provide you some size and strength and provide other types of toughness and grit here that they certainly, uh, you can never have too much of that going into the playoffs so that you're tough 
to play against. So we'll actively see here where this goes, but the Maple Leafs are expected to possibly make a trade sometime in the next week or two if they can find that right deal, and it's likely going to involve one of these defensemen whose roles have been diminished because of the young players stepping up and taking on more ice time. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here today down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.